Okay. Thank you for uh, coming out for this. Um, my name is Ken Hertz. I have several businesses. One of them is I represent talent for a living as a lawyer um, in Los Angeles. And if you go to the, my About Me page, I'm lucky enough to be an early enough adopter. I've been doing this long enough that my About Me page is actually in my own name. So go to about.me slash Ken Hertz, and you can find out who we represent. I also have a company called Membrane. Uh, Membrane is a consulting firm that looks after big companies like McDonald's and Hasbro and Intel and Cody and helps them navigate Hollywood. Um, I have to go somewhat fast. Um, I'm on all sorts of social media like we all are because today it seems like we're all becoming celebrities. And so the purpose of this talk is to talk about how to put the star in startup, how to help startups access celebrity to make deals. Um, even though we're all celebrities, Dick Clark was rich. You don't even know who Dick Clark is probably if you're from Finland, but Dick Clark had a show called American Bandstand. He produced the American Music Awards. He was a producer, essentially. And he was a DJ, and he made so much money that he was on the Forbes 400 list in the 70s. He was a billionaire in the 70s, back when that really meant something. Simon Cowell is pretty rich, too. And so is this guy. And these guys don't make music. They're not recording artists, but they make money off of music. Right? Who else is making money? Does anyone recognize this chart? Well, that's Apple's stock price, right? Uh, Steve Jobs said, let's think different. But you know, he really didn't think different, did he? he if you look at this chart, this is, the, this, this is hard to read. But what I can show you is that in 2001, when the iPod was launched, Apple's market cap was $6.5 billion. And in 2003, when iTunes was launched, Apple's market cap was $5 billion. Actually, market, their market cap had gone down a billion and a half dollars between 2001 and 2003. But from the point that iTunes was launched until today, they've never looked back. Their company is worth over a half a trillion dollars now. And this is on the back of music and their affiliation with celebrity. Because selling music is not a business. Right? So those of you who, who may be confused about this, what I mean here is that I'm going to posit that music has always been free. During the file sharing era and the Napster era that Ash was talking about, uh, music was not what was being sold. Napster was interactive radio, just like Spotify. It gave people the opportunity to listen to what they wanted to, when they wanted to, where they wanted to, and it felt free. Right? But music has always been free. You never paid for music. If you wanted music, you go down on the street corner and find a musician who's playing, or you turn on the radio. You can listen to music anytime you want for free anywhere in the world. But what you pay for is quality and convenience and the ability to listen to what you want, when you want, to time shift, to space shift, to location shift. That's what people pay for. But music, and celebrity in general, is the best way to sell other stuff. That is a tattoo of Nicki Minaj, right? And it's a tattoo on that guy, right? That actually, that guy has a tattoo of Nicki Minaj. What other brand in the world would people really seriously put on their bodies, right? Because fans fall in love with their favorite artists and their favorite celebrities, right? They trust the people that help them discover new music. And once you're selling the dream, those are Ramstein dildos. Right? Because the fact of the matter is that, as we all know, an artist is the only one in the world that can sell a $5 t-shirt for $30. Marketers understand this. Right? You've heard a lot of talk today and a lot of different presenters talking about the fact that you know, uh, marketers, you know, one guy was up here a minute ago talking about how music is the way to access $550, trillion, $550 billion worth of marketing spend which is a lot bigger than the, than the perceived music business. But I would argue that no one was ever selling music. In fact, Starbucks got it wrong. In the United States, Starbucks sold th was responsible for this Ray Charles record selling three million CDs. Most of those were sold in Starbucks, right? It was so successful, in fact, that some guy came into the company and decided to be, that, that they weren't selling enough records, and they turned Starbucks into little record stores. And for a period of time, there were literally dozens, if not hundreds, of different record titles in Starbucks. But the thing is, Starbucks had a dialogue going on with their customers that actually made sense. 
right? The, the Ray Charles record made sense to customers because it felt curated. So they went out and they made a deal with Paul McCartney and it was a disaster, right? Because somebody thought that if one artist is good, then dozens must be better. Beats, on the other hand, got it right. You know, Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre are going to make a thousand times as much money on their Beats business than either of them ever made in the record business. They don't even come close, right? Jimmy Iovine, the most successful A&R guy in the history of the record industry, and a guy who produced some of the most important records of all time, and in fact worked with some of the most important artists of all time, and built a very successful company. Beats is worth $3.2 billion in less than seven years. No one's ever seen that kind of wealth accumulation in the music industry, in the entertainment industry in general, right? Jennifer Lopez has an extraordinarily successful line of fragrances. So does Britney Spears. So does Beyonce. And so does Justin Bieber. In fact, our office has made almost $3 billion worth of retail, uh, annual retail on just fragrance deals. And so you have to ask, like, today, who is a celebrity, right? It's people that are beautiful, right? They make your brand aspirational. It's people that are credible, right? They make your customers feel better about themselves. It's people that are rich, because who doesn't really want to be rich? And it's people that are charitable, right? Because when your customers care about more than just themselves, they want to be reminded that so do you. And celebrities are talented. That's LeBron James. LeBron James made $30 million just on his interest in Beats, just for agreeing to endorse Beats, right? But in addition, he's got, at any given time, it seems like there's no limit to the number of things he can endorse. Right? And Beyonce is all of these things. And today, you can be a celebrity just because you're popular. Right? Andy Warhol may have gotten it right when he said that in the future, all, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. Because in a friction-free world, which is the world we're entering, a world where everyone has a smartphone, friction's where the money is and celebrities cut through the clutter. But you have to be careful. There's a number of different reasons to use celebrities. That's Ashton Kutcher talking to the uh, founders of eBay, right? So your brand can get credibility through an association or awareness through an association. That's Lady Gaga uh, at the relaunch of Polaroid when it came out of bankruptcy. They hired her to be their creative director. Kim Kardashian is rumored to make $35 million this year alone on a video game that bears her name. So the question is what kind of deal you want to make. Right? Obviously, the best kind of deal is when a celebrity uses your product because they really just love your product. Or you can make a deal where you pay them money, but you know, how, many startups have, how many startups have money and what can you afford? And what do you get for your money? And you have to ask, do you want to give up your precious cash or do you want to make a deal for royalties and equity in lieu of money? And what do you do if they don't use, understand, or support your product? Because the problem with celebrities in general is that artists are artists because they can't not be, the real ones, the ones that really have the credibility or the, 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 fans, the, the fans fall in love with. Right? You have to ask yourself, if you're making a deal with them for money, are they really going to go out and talk about your product? Are they really going to go out and talk about your service? Are they really going to understand your business as well as you do? You know, there's a, there's, a commonly, uh, there's a common intimidation that goes on in Hollywood. George Clooney supports a lot of charities. But when he does so, he typically gets in front of a microphone and he knows more about the charity than the guy who runs the charity. That's very intimidating to most celebrities who don't want to pretend even though they love what the charity does, they don't want to pretend that they understand how it does it. And the same is certainly true when they're being paid money to endorse a product. The worst possibility of all is that they get caught in front of a microphone with nothing to say, or they say the wrong thing, or they say something stupid. But you can make a deal for equity and have it be an endorsement. And in that case, you can align your interests where the celebrity has an incentive to really understand what your company does, because if you succeed, they succeed. 
But you have to, once again, you have to decide what does that look like on your, on your cap table. You can also hire advisors. This is a guy named Mark Cuban. For those of you who don't, Mark, if you don't, those of you who don't know Mark Cuban, Mark Cuban uh, sold a company called Broadcast.com to Yahoo many years ago, and he's perceived to be just a really smart guy. And he's become, he's, he's spent his billions buying his way uh, into various companies. He is on a show called Think Tank, excuse me, Shark Tank in the US, and uh, is an advisor to, an investor to lots of little startups. He has his whole criteria that's been well described. And you, know, you, have to, you have to look at your advisory board, and when you're giving advisory shares to a celebrity or to someone who's prominent, are they really going to advise? What role do they play? Do they give you social currency, right? The fact is, celebrities, celebrities are perceived to be cooler than you are. So if they bring the kind of coolness to your brand that translates to your potential consumers in a way that allows you to achieve awareness without having to spend money on marketing, then they're worth their weight in gold. But it doesn't always work. Uh, you know, Justin Timberlake invested his own money and took a prominent role in MySpace, and the jury is still out. But it is a way to reimagine a brand, to relaunch a brand, to restart your company, to pivot, associating with a celebrity who gives you an awareness with a target audience. And then there's the idea that a, that a celebrity actually operates as an entrepreneur, as a founder, as an advisor. Forgive me for going so fast, but I was warned that they're going to throw me off the stage if I, get, take, less, if I take more than 13 minutes. And this pre presentation was prepared only in the last couple of days. Um, this is Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba's company is called The Honest Company. It was started with a guy named Brian Lee. Brian Lee is the, is the uh, investor behind LegalZoom, which he started with a guy named Bob Shapiro, who was one of uh, OJ's lawyers at the time. And he also started Shoe Dazzle with Kim Kardashian as an investor, partner, royalty recipient, endorser, what have you. But in, in the case of The Honest Company, they seem to have really gotten the formula right. They created a brand in partnership with Jessica Alba that Jessica Alba not only believes in, but has devoted her entire life to. She acts very rarely. She's there every day running this company. And she is out talking about this company and promoting this company. And they're enjoying an enormous amount of success because Jessica Alba, unlike Brian Lee, opens doors. Stores, retailers want to be in business with her. And her fans understand that the equities really align. So you have to wonder now, what are the pitfalls? Celebrities make mistakes. That's Rihanna after her date with Chris Brown. Celebrities can get overexposed. Miley Cyrus, Justin Bieber, Kim Kardashian all have circumstances, partnerships, and opportunities which one could argue were less than lucrative, less than profitable, less than successful because they didn't make any sense to people. A celebrity can overshadow the brand. Shoe Dazzle got a lot of attention at first, but then it didn't make any sense and it wasn't clear whether Kim Kardashian would ever wear anything that they sold. And speaking of which, if the equities don't align, then it's a potential disaster in the making. Um, nobody thinks, you know, this is, the, Chrysler paid Celine Dion an enormous amount of money to sponsor her show in Las Vegas. And she did a series of commercials for them and they promoted her song. But I don't think anyone thinks that Celine Dion actually drives a car, let alone a Chrysler. So what if celebrity is not enough? Uh, this is interesting. Uh, in August, uh, a study was done that was commissioned by the Daily Variety in Los Angeles that said that US teenagers are more enamored with YouTube stars than they are with the biggest celebrities in film, TV, and music. These were the top three, right? That's Smosh. I think everyone here knows PewDiePie. And those are the Fine Brothers. They were the top three most uh, uh, admired celebrities in this poll amongst teenagers. Uh, they had the top five were all influencers, YouTube stars. Six of the top 10 were not from the traditional entertainment outlets. So that's it. So the idea, I think, is that if you're going to use a celebrity to help build your business, it's very dangerous. There's all kinds of ways to structure the deal. There's all kinds of ways to analyze the deal. It's very tempting to have Ashton Kutcher be your advisor, your investor, your spokesperson, your endorsement partner, your founder, your co-founder, what have you. But it's also very dangerous when you go beyond the obvious choices 
and you start to look to be creative, you have to be very careful. So um, that's a lot of what we do. I think look around the room, you might be sitting next to the next celebrity endorser. Thank you.